Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. A legal victory for singer Ed Sheeran. On Thursday, a New York jury sided with the British Grammy winner, saying he did not copy Marvin Gaye's song, Let's Get It On, when he composed his own 2014 hit song, Thinking Out Loud. The daughter of Gay's co-writer, Ed Townsend, All the time got accused Sheeran of ripping off the song and claimed her family was owed money, alleging similarities in chord progression, rhythm, and certain melodies in the two songs. Sheeran has always denied stealing elements of Gay's song, saying the melodies are different and the elements used in both songs are common in pop music. I'm obviously very happy with the outcome of the case, and it looks like I'm not having to retire from my day job after all. After about three hours of deliberation, a jury settled the debate and determined that Sheeran did not wrongfully copy compositional elements or melodies from Gay's 1973 song. While happy, Sheeran says the lawsuit took an emotional toll. I've missed being with my family at my grandmother's funeral in Ireland, and I will never get that time back. The song's co-author, Amy Wadge, says the musical notes in question are basic musical building blocks that songwriters have been free to use for decades. And she says the outcome has major implications for the music industry and the next generation of young musicians. It was terrifying to even contemplate that this could happen. And so the fact that this has gone our way is just such a huge relief for every young songwriter. TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. Out here, Moscow is losing, but never kindly. A shell flies into the old position this artillery unit used to sit in just ahead of us. This unit of Ukraine's Marines keep moving, keep the Russians guessing. Every time they fire, there is a risk they will be spotted and hit back. All about increasing pressure on Russian lines as their counter-offensive looms. And that crackle in the distance of small arms fire. Ukrainians trying to take down the drones being used to spot them. Something rare is happening here over the hills, far into which these shells land. It's indicated by the unusual sight of Russian jet trails in the sky, one launching a missile here. <laughs> Russian forces are being pushed back from around the town of Avdivka, we are told, from positions Russians have occupied for about nine years before last year's war even started. <laughs> Whether this is a weak spot in Russia's lines or the counter-offensive in action, we do not know. But this pushback in the east is something these troops from the 128th Territorial Defense Brigade training furiously, hope to replicate in the south, where the counter-offensive will likely focus. There is little shortage of ammunition here, quite the opposite. And they say the Russians already seem to know something from Ukraine is coming. For all the simulation and noise, the reality on the front has been ugly, brutal. They show us this video, taken from a dead Russian, that shows his tank trying to escape. The Ukrainians know this horror too. Завжди ви виїжджає ворожі танки та відпрацьовують наша артилерія. І все, що в них є. Мене тут помер кращий друг, рідний дядько та батько кращого друга. 
it will be real again all too soon. Heavy losses fueling their steps forwards. Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. More troubling signs for America's banks. Shares of PacWest Bank were cut in half after Bloomberg reported the California-based lender is considering a sale. The bank says it's exploring strategic options. There's 4,000 banks in the country. Interest rates have gone up at the fastest pace in 40 years and the economy flowing. There are going to be banks here. In a statement, PacWest says, quote, the bank has not experienced out of the ordinary deposit flows following the sale of First Republic Bank. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell remained confident in the U.S. banking system as he announced another interest rate hike on Wednesday. Conditions in that sector have broadly improved since early March and the U.S. banking system is sound and resilient. But investors continue to flee from mid-sized regional banks, and the impacts stretch from Wall Street to Main Street, where the bank failures could lead to a credit crunch. Nervous bankers cutting back on lending and raising the cost on mortgages, credit cards, car loans, and small business loans. You have to factor in that, especially the, the more medium-sized and smaller banks, um, lend to a lot of customers who don't have access to the corporate bond market or other markets. And so when, when those banks cut back lending, it is definitely going to have an impact on their customers who don't have other ready sources of, of, of borrowing. Follow The Advocate channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. Four members of the far-right Proud Boys convicted of seditious conspiracy. USA! USA! A jury finding Enrique Tarrio, the former leader of the Proud Boys, Ethan Nordine, Joseph Biggs, and Zachary Real, guilty of seditious conspiracy and other charges, in a verdict affirming the prosecutor's central allegation that they conspired to stop the peaceful transfer of power on January 6th by attacking the Capitol. In a trial that stretched four months, prosecutors highlighted Donald Trump's earlier pandering to the Proud Boys. Proud Boys, Proud Boys stand back and stand by, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left. Along with video and messages like this one. It's time for effing war if they steal this S. Making the case that Trump's election lies. It was a rigged election. Inspired the Proud Boys to help gin up a revolution against the incoming Biden presidency. So we just stormed the f Capitol. Yeah, we did. Defense attorneys argued their clients were merely scapegoats, and it was Trump who incited the riot. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. The Proud Boys coming in. But prosecutors said the Proud Boys were at the front lines of the mob. We love Trump! We love Trump! Riling up the crowd as the first barriers were breached. Today's verdict marks the third time prosecutors have notched convictions for seditious conspiracy in their historic prosecutions in the aftermath of January 6th. But the jury finding a fifth Proud Boy, Dominic Pozzola, not guilty of seditious conspiracy. He was not accused of holding a leadership role within the far-right group. He did, according to prosecutors, steal a police riot shield, <laughs> using it to break a window that rioters used to enter the Capitol. Victory smoke in the Capitol, boys! The jury found Pozzola guilty of other crimes crimes, like obstruction of an official proceeding. Tario's indictment especially significant. He wasn't in Washington on January 6, having been arrested two days earlier and ordered to leave the city. But messages presented by prosecutors suggest Tario was readying for a revolution and helped create a command structure within the group in the run-up to the Capitol insurrection. Make no mistake, Tario told other Proud Boys on January 6, we did this. Thanks for watching The Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out advocatechannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.